Hey everybody, welcome to your favorite place to get all the geek news, This Week in Geek. I'm your host Jess, and here we talk about what's happening in movies, TV, tech, gaming, anime, everything geek, so let's get into it. In movie news, we have a huge announcement. James Gunn and Peter Safran have finally announced what they're going to be doing with the DC Universe. Ooh. So there's going to be all kinds of new movies and a lot of new series that are going to premiere on HBO Max. Now, I'm not really a fan of a lot of the DC Universe stuff, but I did say in my I'll last... I'll take that right now! I did say in my last This Week in Geek that HBO never misses, so please don't let me down, HBO. <laughs> They're setting an 8 to 10 year plan, which will require the actors to sign on to decade long contracts. What? Would you do it? I feel like I'd have to say yeah, but that's a long time. Man, if you're an actor and you're locked in to 10 year contract with one of the hugest franchises in the world, you've made it. Weirdly enough, they're going to keep The Flash. The Flash is going to come out in June and it will kick off this next phase of the DC Universe. I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, they're not going to keep Ezra Miller, are they? He's not going to be a main part of the DC Universe. What are they thinking? Another big part of DCU's first chapter will be Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, which James Gunn is describing as a harsher Supergirl than we've seen before, which in my mind means more evil, hopefully, because that's the story that I want to see. I want to see superheroes gone evil, subverting the genre. But what I'm most excited about is a new series called Paradise Lost that will focus on the women of the Amazon in Wonder Woman story. And this will predate Diana, and James Gunn has described this as a Game of Thrones type story, I'm already hooked, he knows the language to use, that involves all of the darkness and drama and political intrigue behind this society of only women. My god, a show with only badass warrior women and political intrigue? This is gonna make me like the DC Universe at last. There's gonna be a new legacy story for the Batman, starring his son Damien. And if this is Where's gonna Batman lead to. Has a son? Yeah, apparently. Who's his mama? Mama's name is Talia Al Ghul, who is very hot. And what I'm least excited about is the announcement of a new Swamp Thing movie. Who cares? <laughs> So in some sad news, you might have heard already, but Annie Wershing from the video game The Last of Us, the voice of Tess, has passed away at the age of 45. According to an announcement by her husband, she was diagnosed with cancer in 2020, and the news of her death comes very shortly after the premiere of The Last of Us. So I just have to hope that at least she saw her character come to life on screen before she passed. So rest in peace, Annie. In happier news for The Last of Us, they have been early renewed for season two following some massive success in numbers. The viewership for episode two grew by 20% and we saw another huge jump in several million viewers for episode three, which is getting a ton of praise, especially because it is the biggest deviation from the game plotline. Everyone is talking about Nick Offerman. I absolutely adored every moment. No spoilers, but I did really enjoy the way that they deviated from the story as well. And it's so great how they are just like giving more backstory to characters that they had said that they wanted to tell more in the game, but they just like didn't. You're gaining so much more watching the show. It's not like you're just playing the game again. It's like a whole new experience. Yes, exactly. In other TV news, several contestants of Netflix's adaptation of Squid Game, the reality show, are already getting hurt filming it. So they're shooting the red light, green light game in an airplane hangar in the winter of London, and I guess temperatures have reached zero degrees Celsius, which is freezing in Fahrenheit. They just weren't prepared for the actual near-death scenario that they were put in. A little frostbite might be worth it because the prize for winning this reality show is reported to be $4.56 million. What? Mm -hmm. Sign me up, baby! In gaming news, we have a lot of announcements that came out of the Bethesda Developer Direct Showcase. We got some awesome extended gameplay for Redfall, the first-person vampire shooter, and a release date of May 2nd. We also got a April release date for Minecraft Legends and some PvP mode information. We got new gameplay for Forza Motorsport, which is set to release sometime in 2023. And they're going to allow everybody to play Elder Scrolls Online for free for a limited time all previous 20 chapters, excluding High Isle. And this is because the new chapter, Necrom, was just announced, as well as the new class, Arcanist, which is only one of three new classes that has ever been announced in the history of Elder Scrolls. 
As reported by Variety, Amazon Studios announced a multi-year TV deal with Critical Role, as well as a first-look film deal with them. So this means more and more Dungeons & Dragons TV and movie content. This is so exciting for the D&D and just gen general tabletop role-playing world. And we can only imagine that this is coming hot on the heels of the first season's immense success. The Legend of Vox Machina is still at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Do you think Incredible. Stranger Things helped D&D? Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. It brought it to the mainstream. We have another leak! What? Woo! This Week in Leak! <laughs> this Woo! Week in the Leak is terrible! <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn's multiplayer alpha footage has leaked. Apparently it's from 2020, but there was some video and screenshots. I could only get a hold of some of the screenshots, so I'll show you, but the character designs are kind of divisive. Some people are saying they look stupid and fat and silly and like Fortnite characters, but I actually... I like them. I think they're cute. Well, let me know in the comments what you think about this. In anime news, we have another Miyazaki fashion collab. The fashion label Low is doing its third collaboration. They previously did My Neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away last year. And now we have the Howl's Moving Castle collab, which features a fuzzy calcifer dress, which I would totally rock on this show. We have a backpack, which is his moving castle. It's so cute and looks like it has so many pockets. And of course, a Howl print cape, which you can wear to all of the places where you would wear a cape. Thank you everybody for tuning into This Week in Geek. Don't forget to leave us a comment if you have any thoughts on the new DC news or The Last of Us, Episode 3, or anything else we talked about today. Drop us a like, share us with your friends, and we'll see you next time.